you know, I know everybody's really busy. Well, um, let's just jump into it. Uh, I'm going to try and get this done in under under a half an hour because I know how, how busy everybody is. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I've been in the tire and auto repair industry for 20 years now. I got started in 1998, 97 actually, when I uh, became a partner in ProCare Automotive and we, we uh, had 104 auto repair and tire stores. And uh, 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 when I got involved, this is what I saw. And so I, I quickly called my, my, my friend, Arnie Levin, who's a cartoonist for the New Yorker, and he did this cartoon for me. And I, use, I still use it 20 years later. I use it every day in my training and coaching. But I, I got very clear that that um, that this fellow right here in the middle of the screen holding the phone was the one that determined my income, and perhaps perhaps your income as well on some level. You know, uh, bringing in the customers and uh, closing sales. So it became my passion. What I observed was that it was very inefficient the way we were doing business uh, as a company, and. Uh, so what I did, I spent now, it's been my passion to figure out how to, how to close more business on the phone and um, uh, how to save deals. And uh, over the last three years, I've figured something out that I'm going to share with you today. Very powerful. Uh, a, a little housekeeping. Um, if somebody has a, um, a question, there is a chat function in the GoToMeeting control panel. So feel free to please chat a message. I'll keep my eyes open on that. Okay. Feel free to just chat. Um, and at the end of the end of the session, if we have time, I will open it up for, for, for questions. Anybody has a question, I'll be happy to, uh, to, to oblige if I can. Um, I'm going to just share a little bit about uh, my company, what we do real quick. My mission in life is simple. I'm clear. I'm here to support your efforts. Okay. If you're a dealer, if you run a chain, whatever, I'm here to support your efforts. I do that by by finding missed opportunities in real time, and we put them right back into your lap. We find missed opportunities. I'm going to show you today exactly how we do that. Um, while we're finding missed opportunities, we also calculate closing percentages. Okay, because one way to find extra cars is by by figuring out which ones are about to fall through the cracks and saving them. And we're going to show you that. And secondly, batting average, finding out and improving the batting average. What's the batting average? I mean, if you're, if you're closing, you know, 45% of your tire calls, that means you're leaving 55% on the table. Let's find that out. Okay, let's move the needle. But until we can measure that, and it's like playing baseball. How do you know what to improve? You know, if you don't know your batting average against – Fastball pitchers or curveball pitchers or whatever. You got to know, you got to be able to measure it in order to be able to improve it. And that was always a challenge. You know, when I had 100, 100 and some odd stores, you know, and we had 500 people answering the phones all day long. How do you, how do you know what's going on? We really were flying blind, you know. So um, we do performance analytics. We developed a program called Sales Max Plus. I'm going to show that to you today. Um, that's where we calculate the closing percentages and all that. We, we're quite skilled and have a lot of experience in the domain of call tracking. So I'm going to show you two call tracking applications. Okay. We do uh, lots of training and coaching. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you today as well. And, and, and finally, so there's two, two ways, three ways really to improve, you know, get more cars every day. One, Find missed opportunities. Don't let them fall through the cracks. Number two, improve batting average. And the third one is make the phone ring more. You know, <laughs> once you've got the other two under control, let's pile the phone calls on. So it's easy. I think my claim is it's easy. It's easy to find an extra couple of cars, two, three cars a day in just about every store. Okay. So first thing is call tracking. Most of the sales opportunities come in on the phone. So this is... This is a call, typical tr call tracking application that we use, all right? And so the calls are coming in here in real time every day from around the network. And this company has about 12 locations, one of our, one of our great uh, Tire Pros clients. Um, you want to find out more about what's going on on the phone, you just click on call report. 
real quick and it shows call volumes and 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 this is all fabulous stuff this is great it shows you how many calls are coming in by store by type of advertising and marketing so it's really 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 important to see where the calls coming from and how effective your advertising is but when you go back to the to the call log and you see the sheer volume of calls that come in to that cartoon world that we call the auto repair and tire business, right? You see it's 37,000. How do you make sense out of it all, right? These systems, most call tracking systems have been designed by technical people and phone people. Nothing wrong with it. It's just technical people, phone people give you all kinds of great phone data. Here's another one. This is all our friends out in California called Mountain View Tire, right? Fabulous clients for many, many, many years. We do all their tracking. Again, these are calls coming in. Thousands, thousands, and thousands of calls coming in every month, all right? Um, on the reporting end, again, real quick, um, just click on the couple of clicks, and you can see exactly how many calls are coming in on a per-store basis. It's really valuable information. How are the tracking numbers working? Which, which marketing vehicles are bringing the most calls? But again, the challenge when you're dealing with, with, with lots of calls like this is all the sales opportunities and everything are buried in here. It's happening in real time. It's happening every day. But the calls, the sales opportunities are buried. Okay, I've spent the last three years of my life working on something for you guys and gals. Okay, and here it is. This is the same, these are the same exact calls coming in to your business. The difference is there's a different view, okay? The yellow calls are calls that are missed opportunities, about to fall through the cracks, okay? Missed opportunities are identified very clearly and plainly, right? Hang-ups gives, gives people an opportunity to follow up again, to take a second crack at it, okay? Calling back hangups in real time is like picking up money off the street, if you know about it. And trust me on this, every single company out there gets lots of hangups every day. And here's an example. We uncovered this hangup nine minutes after it happened. Okay? So it's right there, ready to go. Somebody can follow up on it, all right, with the software. All right? The other thing we do is... Our, our team, when we find a missed opportunity, this is one of the ways we help, you, help our dealer clients. We send this alert. We hit send alert. It goes right out to the, to the smartphone of the, uh, the manager or the sales manager, somebody in the company. Immediate follow-up can happen. A, calls, a, a sales opportunity is about to fall through the cracks. Okay, so we, we send out an alert. We call that real-time sales lead notification, okay? Uh, and as you can see, every company, every company out there gets missed opportunities. The other thing that this system is designed to do is to provide um, information on promised callbacks. This happens a lot, okay? <laughs> and a lot of these fall through the cracks. They don't have to anymore. Watch, here's an example. So say you're, say you're on the phone with somebody and they say, uh, well, I, you know, I have to check with my husband and I'll call you back in a couple of days. Okay, good. Happens every day, right? Follow-up is needed. Yes, follow-up is needed, okay? Follow-up is needed on the 22nd. As long as this follow-up is checked, it will show up again on what we call our DSF report, Daily Sales Follow-Up Report. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. Here's an actual DSF report that was sent out this morning at like 5 a.m. So when the store manager comes in, he can look to see, here's the salesperson, here's the customer, this is what the call is about. And a lot of these are promised callbacks, right? This says also indicates that an alert was already sent out on this one. So somebody can, can, can see, you know, okay, who do we have to call back? And the manager and the team can, can divide up the calls 
and 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 maybe you know one of the guys calls another one, they swap you know and call customers back and and save deals every day okay um the other thing so so how we find how you can find calls is have is having the right software this system this system is designed by salespeople for business people not by technical people all right so we want to make it available for you to follow up now check there's some other features to this too watch say you want to have a meeting with your team about um, uh, it's a sales meeting about tire calls because well, you're in the tire business you just go right up here to the search bar and type in the word tire and now every single call on the screen is related to tires tire calls okay you want to do brakes etc you can do the same thing you want to you want to search by salesperson's name type the salesperson in like that you find you, you want to have an intervention you want to have a, a meeting etc very easy to do now just so you know, and I want to make sure I cover this, that when you, when you open up one of these calls, here's a missed opportunity. All you have to do is click here, and you can listen to the call immediately. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's that simple. So you can listen to the call. Um, you can actually just right-click up here, save the link, and send it around the system by email, too, if you want. You know, But the idea is really to provide you with the ability, through the software, to follow up on missed opportunities chop chop right when they're happening missed opportunities if you can't find if you and, and believe me every company I've yet to see a company that doesn't have missed opportunities right if you can't find an extra car one two three cars per day right you're not looking that's my claim all right uh, now another feature of the software is so that's how we that's how we find missed opportunities right here's another feature reporting Unparalleled reporting. This is how you want to move the needle on on batting average, on closing percentages. We have to know where, where the starting point is, right? Here's the starting point right here. Okay, so you're looking at this is current, so this is just for this month for February. Okay, so you're looking at 73% overall, which is which is an improvement from where they started a year ago, year and a half ago. Believe me, much better. Okay. Actually, this is this is interesting. Here is for the month. This is Price Shopper. This is, these are the Price Shopper calls that are coming in. And and trust me, I'll look you right in the right in the camera, right in the eye, and say every company out there in the tire industry struggles with Price Shoppers. Everybody struggles. And to see this now moving at 14% is an improvement. Believe me. A lot of companies are not even on the playing field. The guys just dump guys and gals just dump prices to get off the phone. All right. Now here's another. This is another important area. Okay. Who's closing? Who's actually asking for the appointment? Is the customer asking? Is the employee asking? This ties directly into training. If you want to move the needle, <laughs> we always we always say say who's asking for the the appointment? Who's asking for the order? We measure it. We can show you exactly who's really. Which one of your salespeople is really in the game? Who's making a move? Who's making a move? And when I say making a move, I'm not talking about being aggressive, but what I'm saying is, and this ties directly into, into the next function, which is our, our training program. My claim is this, is that the only time commerce happens for any of you and me is when there's an exchange of commitments. When commitments are exchanged by the, you know, the seller and the, the prospective customer, that's when commerce happens. So the question becomes, who's who's making commitments? Who's causing commitments to occur? Who's causing commitments to occur out there in the in the world? Okay. So it's um, and you scroll down and you can see. So this is by people. So here it is by salesperson, and you can see there's a big difference. There's a big difference in closing percentage by salesperson. Okay. Now you come down and you see. Closing percentages by product category. And this is going to tie into training and coaching, but also in that in that third piece, the try, you know, the third piece of the puzzle, the digital marketing and the marketing and advertising, how many calls are coming in for the types of 
products and services that you really want to sell. So here's, I'll give you an example of how this works, all right? I'll show you right now how we use this data to help analyze and help support your efforts. So here in this particular month, we've analyzed 642 total calls, 339 sales opportunities. I said overall closing percentage was 73%, right? That means 92 were left on the table, 247 were closed. And here's for me where it starts to get interesting when you can come up here, and this is this, this sales opportunity column right here, and you can see that, that, that tire price requests, this is a tire company, right? Total sales opportunities, tire calls represents what's that around 20 some odd, 20 some odd percent, okay? All right, and you come up here and you look at alignments, you look at other types, what are the mission critical calls Right, and it's very interesting. Breaks, 93%. Fabulous closing percentage on breaks, right? We don't have enough calls. So I'm already engaged in conversations with the marketing team to improve the number of calls here coming in for breaks on a monthly basis. Same thing with alignments, right? And on the, on the tires, actually this number, 45% closing percentage on tires is actually, is actually improvement over when we started this thing back a while ago and we're seeing movement over here on the price shoppers like I said so this is very good news all right um, now over here on this side we're measuring it's we start to get into how are we going to move the, the, the closing percentages I showed you how we how we find missed opportunities in real time I'm going to show you a, a couple of ways that we actually that we actually um, move the needle based on what people are saying. Okay, so here, watch. Ikiwit, Ikiwit stands for, I can help you with that. Choice Close stands for, Choice Close. I've, I've got an op opening for you, Todd, today at two o'clock or one at four o'clock. Which works best for you, Todd? Simple, Choice Close. And if you preface that by saying, Todd, you've called the right place. I'm the guy. I can definitely help you. I can help you with that. I can help you with tires and brakes and whatever. You, eh, and I want to do it today, right now, or at 2 o'clock. Simple moves. Very simple moves. I call these power moves. Because making a commitment, the, this, the saying I can help you with that, and including a time element, that's what turns it into a commitment. It's very important for the sales team and the service advisors and the managers to understand how to form effective commitments because that's what produces that's what produces commerce produces everything for us right so that's what we're measuring here and you can see when you come down below when you come down below here you can see what happens when you make and this is just a little data I can increase the number of the amount of data that we're looking at but you can see a hundred percent <laughs> three for three on choice closes and Ikiwit is 70%, you know, so if I want to, if I want to load up some more data, I could just show you what it looks like with uh, real quick with some more data. And before I do that, look, so you, if you have multiple stores also, it's very easy to calculate closing percentages by store and you can see it varies. Fabulous. Look, 82%, 75%, 63%. Okay. <laughs> We can work work with the managers, create a competitive environment, the batting average. Very powerful. Okay. Let me just, I'll do a quick look up of some more data for you so you can see. You can do last month. So this is this month. Now this is last month. We'll just see what happened in the month of uh, January. That quick. And you can see that actually the closing percentage is up a little bit. Overall, current month is a little bit higher than it was last month. And if you scroll down here, you can see um, actually the, the tire closing percentage. I know we've been working on tires with them. We've been working on tires real, you know, and so it's up quite a bit actually. So this is another way to find, you improve your batting average from 37 to 45% and you're going to get more cars. You're going to sell more tires for sure. No doubt about it. Okay. Now I want to show. I'm going to open it up for some some questions, you know, as as we go along. Uh, but I I want to show you one other thing from the software point of view. 
You want to improve, you want to improve closing percentages, big time. Okay, have your people, have your people sit down here at this screen, right, and tag calls. Tag calls means come in here, you get a new hire, or you get somebody that's struggling a little bit. They have to work on their hearing. They have to work on the distinctions. They have to work on what's a sales opportunity. So by coming in here, they can sit down here and click and listen to calls quickly and listen to 50 or 100 calls over the course of a few days and do all their own tagging. What's the call about? Who answered it? Is it a sales opportunity? What fabulous way to train people. Who's the salesperson? A lot of times the salesperson is different than who answered the phone, you know. Are the salespeople asking the customer's name? Are they requesting a phone number? Might be different than the caller ID. Has are the are the salespeople asking? By the way, have you done business with us before? Yes or no? Critical question. Are they declaring? Are they making a power move to the hoop? Meaning, are they saying, I can help you with that? You're in the right place. That's what this is about. Are they saying that, yes or no? Have people start tagging their own calls on a regular basis, okay? What's the energy level like? Now, if, if one of your staff is tagging calls as a part of a training program that we would implement, right, they can also, if they find a hot lead, that's, they could also hit send alert boom, and send it out to the, to the store, put, type some notes in here, and it goes right out to the store instantly for follow-up, okay? So we can, we can uh, find all these missed opportunities like this. As I said, we measure price dumps, we measure price shoppers, really powerful system. And then so, so just to recap a little bit, and then I want to open it up if anybody has, anybody has any questions, all right? We find missed opportunities. Make them available by, you know, identifying and, and color coding all the missed opportunities and things that are there for immediate follow-up. We we do it also by providing by providing all our clients with the, um, whoops, what did I do with that? Oh, here it is with the the daily sales follow-up reports, and it works. You find call back. Oh, I forgot to call these people back. So that's mission critical. The other, the next way we we find missed or not or or is to improve closing percentages, of course, you know. So that's what we use the all the statistics and everything for, to publish, and to empower people. And finally, it's the training, you know. And and I have a very powerful training program that I've been working on for the past 20 years in the in the auto repair and tire industry, where we teach the fundamentals of how how to close more business and we teach people about what I call the language of commitment. Uh, matter of fact, this morning I was on with uh, McClay's, we were doing a, a whole session, we did 45 minutes on listening and um, as a part of the whole communications training program that we do with them. You know, but here I give you an example of some of the things we work on and then we'll, we'll open it up, uh, we'll do this for about three minutes and then we'll open it for a couple of questions, all right? Um, it's important for salespeople especially to see that there's three layers of communication taking place out there in the world. What I call uh, automatic communication, right here. Okay, and an example of what automatic communication is, is if I were to ask you, any of you, the following question. What color is a Ferrari? Most of you are going to say red. Just an example. And it's important to point this out. If I were to ask, what food do you eat when you go to the movies? Popcorn. How much is a brake job? Boom. Automatic. How much is an oil change? Automatic. What's the year making model? People have, they go into automatic mode on the phone and at the counter. It's important to say, I'm not saying it's bad. It's only bad if automatic, if the automatic mode of your salesperson is producing a 30% closing rate on tires, that's not a good automatic. So that's why it's important to see this, okay? Information and data. 
as a society, what I've discovered in measuring a million calls over the last 20 years, at least, is that as a society, we're fixated on information and data. It's the way it is, right? But inf exchanging information and data with a customer does not produce commitment. Because what I, what I said before is, is a fact. The only time commerce happens is when we exchange commitments. So the, inf the exchange of information and data in automatic mode, it is what it is. It's a part of business, I agree. But what people have to do is shift into the commitment mode. Every sales conversation, you have to go there. I want to see you down here today, Mr. Jones. I want to see you down here. I love getting new customers, and I promise to take care of you today at 2 o'clock. Or would 4 o'clock be better? We have to go there. Right, so this is a big point of our of our uh, of our teaching. All right, and then finally, uh, I'll I'll button it up by saying this: we set we help our clients put in place what I call standards. And I'm not I don't have time to get into all of this stuff today, but I want to show you we help you establish standards for what it means to communicate effectively at the counter and at the, and on the phone. Okay, so here's I'll just give you a little tidbit of it. My claim is that when people walk in or they call in, the first step is to build relationship, number one. I call it a CFR, conversation for relationship and trust, right, number one. Number two, number two, conversation for action. That's, this is the, the commitment part, right? So again, it's important to have these models out on the counters, et cetera, so people remember, hey, I've been talking about tires, sizes and combinations and inventory and prices and all this. I have to. I have to move in. Now it's time to move into the conversation for action stage. If you don't go, if you don't get to this point, and I'll just share this with you, and then I want to see if anybody has any questions. I listened to a 33-minute tire call. God's honest truth. 33 minutes couple weeks ago. I didn't listen to the whole thing. I listened to two minutes in the beginning, two minutes at the end, and they sounded the same. 33 minutes of talking about talking, talking, talking about tires. They never got to the conversation for action. The phone end, call ended, boom, gone. And it made me crazy. You know, so that's why I'm sharing it with you. But with teaching people the moves, you got to have a closing move. And what I'm saying is the closing move is I want to take care of you. I can help you with that. I'm the one you're in the right place. I'm the guy. I'm going to take care of you today, and I want to do it at 2 o'clock. Or would 3 be better? Boom, simple. So there we have. This is, this is a, a quick introduction. I know there's a lot here, but I want to open it up now. Uh, if anybody has any question at all, please speak now. And if, I don't, if you don't, that's fine. That's cool. And um, I will, um, uh, we can end the meeting. Any questions from anybody? Is there, a wing, is there a link after this to replay the webinar? Yes, actually, you want to know something? It's a good, good question, uh, uh, Todd. I, I, I did record the session, and I am going to make it available. And I'll tell you what I will do. I will mail it out to everybody who's on this, um, who, who registered for the webinar. That's my, my promise to you. Yes. Any other questions? You can type it into the to the chat um, window. That makes sense, certainly. Let me see if there's any other questions here. Uh, any norm? Norm, what's involved in setting up telephone? Well, a great question. What's involved in setting up the telephone recordings is really, really very simple. Um, I'll show you. I could show you real quick, um, Norm. Um, we, we take a, a, a tracking number over here, which we assign, and we, we know how to do this. So we, we, we just assign tracking numbers to different areas of the business. We could track the main number coming into a store, or we could track uh, a marketing number. And these are the numbers, and we label them. And you see here we have web numbers, right? And I think there might be some main numbers in here. These are all web numbers. This is what we're tracking right now for, for this particular client. But we could track main numbers to it. Very easy to set them up. We know how to do that, Norm. Very could be done overnight, literally. You know. Um, and then once the numbers are, are in 
in here, we, we, my programmers have take, take them, move them, and it's the same thing in real time in the sales max application, you know. So um, any other questions? Good question, Norm. Thank you. Any other questions, folks? Please ask away. By the way, I'm thrilled to be going down uh, this weekend. I'm leaving Saturday morning to go down, and uh, I'll be speaking at the uh, uh, Tire Pros annual convention down in New Orleans. Happens to be Mardi Gras. I don't know how I'm going to make out down there in Mardi Gras. I see, I see my friend Bob Bittner, who's the... Uh, the, the, the We've got plenty of friends. We'll look up. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep keep track of me on Bourbon Street. I got lost once down there many years many years ago. <laughs> but I've got I've straightened out my act. Believe me, I may have to stay off Bourbon Street. They may arrest me down there. That's a joke, by the way, folks. These are the jokes. Any other questions? Listen, guys, I, I really, really, really appreciate it. It's a thrill uh, to do this. We have another one, actually, another, my, the next webinar in this series is going to be about how to use the data to, to improve marketing, and it's really powerful. I, I alluded to it, but it's really powerful when you can fine-tune your marketing and, and, and produce the types of phone calls that you want to produce, and that's what we're going to talk about next time. And I, I promise I will send out the, a link to the... Uh, to this session to everybody again okay thank you guys uh, if you see my phone number on the back if anybody wants to talk with me well you have my you can go to the web page malloybdg.com and I'd be more than happy to uh, to talk with you or give you a private demo if you'd like and uh, help you do an assessment if that's what you'd like to do okay uh, thank you guys it's been been fun have a great day